Welcome learners, I am Dipankar Vasamadari, teaching English in the Jeradur School, Surat. And in this lesson, we will discuss the two stories of flying in detail. Uh, there are two stories actually here. One is the first flight, his first flight, and the other is the black aeroplane. Yeah. We'll do the first flight, his first flight first. So what happens, like I told you, there is a seagull. Now what is a seagull? It's a seabird. You can find them in Europe normally. The young seagull was alone on his ledge. So he was standing on the ledge and all his the other members of his family had already flown to the other other side of the to the other side. They were feeding. They were happily moving around in the sea, swimming in the sea. His brothers and sister sister had already flown away, and he had been afraid to fly. Uh, sea birds are instinctively they are built to fly. But in spite of that, he had this fear in him. And because of that, he would try again repeatedly and he would flap his wings. He would then move to the brink, the edge of the ledge, and would come back again from there. When he looked down the cliff, he would see that it was uh, really way down, miles and miles down, and that would make him go back again. If he thought his wings will not support him. Uh, actually, the fact is that his brothers and his sister had shorter wings than his. In spite of that, he was not able to fly. Just like we have sometimes abilities, we have sometimes talents, but we do not know our own talents. And because of that, we fail to achieve our full potential. So he was facing the same problem with love. So he failed to master of courage. Here, master mean, means together, and to plunge means to jump. He was afraid of taking the final plunge. And his parents were trying their best to make him fly, to, make, to give him courage. They were trying to do it, cajole him. They were trying to do it lovingly. They were trying to do it. Uh, they were scolding him. They were doing everything. But he, he wouldn't go. He wouldn't fly. Their parents were doing it because they knew that if he couldn't fly, he would starve to death. And if he didn't starve to death, Prey, predators would kill it. He would become a prey. He would become food for some other animals. So this is this was happening 24 hours ago. That is, we are telling the story that happened, that had happened 24 hours back. Now the seagull is able to fly. Anyway, since then nobody had come near him, and he was watching his brothers and sister feeding on, feeding and happily flying around. They were skimming the waves and they were diving for fish they were catching herring herring is a kind of a fish and they could he could also hear them laugh i mean make happy sounds make happy noises and they had uh, they, they had been walking around on a big plateau now what is a plateau a flat area on a hill or a mountain so they he was looking at them and they were kind of taunting him for his cowardice cowardice means lack of courage or timidity they are making fun of him and they were sitting on the opposite cliff it's a st uh, steep rock face normally by the sea and seeing them feeding seeing them happily moving around the young seagull felt even hungrier because he hadn't eaten because nobody was there to help him nobody was there to feed him his parents were willingly uh, sorry his parents were intentionally avoiding feeding him because they wanted him to fly for himself they wanted him to fend for himself so they were not feeding him anymore and now the sun was ascending ascending means uh, rising going up slowly ascending and because he had not eaten he was feeling really hungry and he was feeling like he was also blacked out from time to time and then he closed the eye and he was pretending to sleep. He pretended to sleep because he wanted to avoid the sight of his, of his family feeding happily. He saw his two brothers and his sister lying on the plateau dozing with their heads sunk into their necks. So he wanted to do the same thing. He wanted to stand on the plateau and he could see his father preening, cleaning his feathers. And his mother was looking at him and they were, and she was taunting him even more because she loved him the most and she would pick up a piece of 
meat and then would rub her beak as if to clean it and uh, the, the young seagull also wanted to do the same and then she would uh, sharpen her beak on the on the rocks rock faces so everything was she was uh, tempting him to take the plunge and she, and he would because of his fear would call call out plaintively plaintively means sadly okay and every minute after some time seeing this the mother played a trick on him the mother picked up a piece of fish and flew across to him and the young seagull thought she would come to him and feed him but surprisingly the mother came very close and then flew away back to the plateau where she had taken shelter where she had been resting and uh, this time it was too much for him he ran to the edge of the uh, of the cliff and then took the plunge and jump he flew his flapped his wings he spread them out and then he was seized by a terror by a panic he was panicky but when he realized uh, but after taking the plunge after going down for some time he could feel that he was started to fly because he had spread out his wings which is natural for a bird he spread out his wings and then he started flapping them and he could feel the wind he could feel, see the sea beneath and the fear was gone in a minute and this made him this uh, gave him extreme pleasure he was exhilarated that he also was able to fly and his family the entire family started praising him for his courage at last they were swooping past him swooping means move rapidly downwards and then coveting coveting means moving up and down in the air and then banking they were tilting sideways to turn so we must have seen planes tilting sideways and when that happens when you do that the plane takes a turn so they were doing the same thing and he commended himself he praised himself for being able to fly like fly like that and he was amused at his own uh, ability he called made bird sounds amusedly and then uh, all of a sudden he realized that he was about to uh, land on the water and he, once again he was terrorized he was scared but when he entered the water he could see that he did not drown he started floating on it only his feet sank into the water and once again he was surprised he he did not know any of these things he was so afraid to try but once he tried all his fear was gone if everything seemed natural to him and then he started enjoying so the story is kind of telling us that we should just take the plunge once we take the plunge everything looks normal and good for us so he started feeding on the dogfish that was available in the sea okay okay let's now talk about the questions and answers the question the first question is why was he why was the young seagull afraid to fly well he was afraid to fly because of these things he lacked confidence because of his own fear he could not take the plunge because of his own demons he had to fight actually we say that we do not win mountains we win ourselves we don't conquer mountains we win we conquer only ourselves so he was not able to conquer himself win over himself and that is why he was afraid of flying do you think a human baby also finds it a challenge to take the first step yes of course we do find it a challenge and uh, taking the first step can be metaphorically thought of like they are starting a business or starting something new not only babies everybody faces this problem we are afraid of taking the first step even though we have the ability we don't do a certain thing certain things because of our own fight to fe uh, fear because of our own underconfidence right so these are the things you will write in your answer the sight of the food question number 2 the sight of the food maddened him maddened him means made him hungrier it made him crave the food even more the instinct of survival made him fly okay now the second question is what compelled the young seagull finally to fly well the instinct of survival the instinct to survive the will to live made him fly ultimately he was so hungry that he could not take it anymore 
Okay. They were beckoning to him, calling shrilly. Why did the seagull's father and mother threaten him and cajole him to fly? Because they knew that if he didn't fly, he would starve or he would be eaten by some other predatory animal. That is why they were trying to make him fly. They were helping him to take the plunge. They were encouraging him to take the first flight. So here is the answer written. Because they wanted him to be self-reliant, they needed him to fend for himself. He could not have depended on them forever. It was their way of pushing him to take the plunge. And have you ever had a similar experience where your parents encouraged you to do something that you were too scared to try? Discuss this in pairs or groups. Okay, we can do that in the classroom. In the case of a bird flying, it seems a natural act and a foregone conclusion that it should succeed. In the examples you have given in answer to the previous question, was your success guaranteed or was it important for you to try, regardless of a possibility of failure? Yes, of course, we need to try. Sometimes we must try. We are forced to try. Otherwise, we actually, when you were in a pit, when you were at the bottom, the only way is up. So if you do not try that, you may never come up. That is why it is really necessary, it's really necessary to try. Uh, you can think about the businesses that were started here. Flipkart started very small. Uh, this big basket also started very small. All these companies started small. Amazon started in a garage. So he did not know that he would be so successful today. It was so long years back. Similarly, Steve Jobs, Apple, he, was, he also started his company in a garage. Okay, so... He took the plunge. These people took the plunge, took the first flight, and then they st started flying. So yes, it is necessary to take the first step sometimes, because that step may lead us to uh, unthinkable, un unforeseen uh, success or happiness. If not success, at least happiness can be achieved like that. So that is why we can say that it is necessary to Try at least, because not trying is the worst crime. Okay, it's like giving up without even trying. And since failure and success are in the future, we do not know what exactly will happen. So it is better to try.